Hey guys, QB here. In this video, I'll be discussing my initial reaction and review of El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. I'll break it down more in future videos, but right now I just really want to give my thoughts on the movie after watching it for the first time. So I tried to not go into it with my standards being too high, but I did have faith in Vince Gilligan and it was not misplaced. I loved it. I feel like I'm still gushing over it and it's hard to not look at it through rose tinted glasses but regardless, it was a very strong movie. It felt very high quality, and it felt like Breaking Bad, but something that was made in 2019. The two hour length felt like it worked out well. It didn't overstay its welcome, it didn't feel like a drag, like IT Chapter 2, and at the same time, I feel like I got a good slice of content out of a single movie, which is around two and a half episodes worth of the show, and that's just the thing, it felt like a movie, it didn't just feel like a Breaking Bad episode. The movie did a good job explaining Jesse's situation, and really anything else a viewer would need to know in order to not be completely confused as to what's going on. And also just spoiler warning in general for the entire movie, but everything pretty much came full circle, everything felt like it had a meaning and it felt like it was pushing the story forward, such as the goons from the candy welding that pretended to be policemen, they came full circle at the end as being the big bad guys, and they also had something to do with the flashbacks with Todd as far as Jesse being a prisoner. And then there's the whole Jesse going to Alaska thing, talking about it with Mike at the beginning and then it actually happening, and then the whole El Camino vehicle was used well both in the current timeline with uh, Skinny Pete and Badger, and also in flashbacks with Todd. It doesn't feel like there was much filler in this movie at all. It kept going at a good pace throughout, and it truly does pay good respects to all Breaking Bad fans. Yeah, there's a lot of cameos, but they're not without good reason. It's not like we just see, you know, Skylar and her sister and everyone else and Walt Jr. just for the sake of it, you know, if there's a flashback with someone in it, it has something to do with Jesse and his story in the movie and his future and just his entire PTSD with being uh, captured by Jack's gang and being tormented by Todd. So yeah, it felt like you were getting something out of everything in the movie. Everything had its place, everything had a reason, nothing was in there just for the sake of well, actually, you know what? There is that corny, yeah, bitch, uh, during the Walt flashback when Jesse is grabbing his food, along with the, uh, the Junkyard Joe reminiscing about Magnet saying how that was a good one, which was kind of cringy, pandering to the meme, but you know what? I'll let it slide. I enjoyed it for what it was, and note that Jesse doesn't say yeah bitch anymore you know he's more hardened he just escaped being a prisoner he's on the run this isn't some time you know to celebrate and be happy and be saying yeah bitch a bunch but he does say it during the flashback back when he was still with Walt Skinny Pete and Badger made solid appearances, getting Jesse on his feet, showing that good friends are loyal till the end. The way Skinny Pete called Jesse his hero and shit just warmed my heart, with the way he gives him his toque and everything, just looking out for him in general as well, ready to help him in every way possible the instance he arrives on his doorstep, Jesse didn't even ask for anything. I'm surprised we didn't get more involved in the murders of Hank and Gomez, and I'm pretty damn sure that we didn't even have the Skinny Pete interview scene in the actual movie. You know, the one that was the initial reveal trailer? They definitely set it up so we can assume that it all happens, as Skinny Pete set himself up to be the one with the El Camino car for when the cops arrive, like all of them, there were so many cops, and he even said that he'd tell them how Jesse, you know, stayed at his place for a night, but that's it, and then, you know, they honestly never hear from Jesse again, he didn't send them a letter or anything, so we don't see them in the movie again. And then the flashback served a good purpose for what was going on currently with Jesse's fugitive situation, along with what he wants to make of his future, and I'll be discussing more of each flashback in separate videos most likely, along with anything else we find and want to discuss, so let me know of any topics you'd like to see us jump into. There's a ton of missable details in this film, so let me know of any you find as well, and maybe we'll highlight them all as well. 
Overall, I'm impressed. It's a great sequel movie. It feels like Breaking Bad, and I love it so much for that. The ending was happy, but kind of bittersweet at the same time. Jesse is able to restart a quiet, peaceful life, but he's alone now. Everyone he cared about and worked with is dead. His partners, Walt, Mike, they're dead. His love interests, Jane and Andrea, I believe her name was. And he obviously never wrote a letter to his parents as they would turn him in for it. But he knew that the last time he talked to them, because he did get to talk to them one final time in this movie, that he wouldn't be able to talk to them again after it. So he said something that sort of didn't make them feel guilty and didn't make them always wonder because you know for all they know now he's going like he's never going to be found he's going to be missing for forever and he's never going to talk to them again so you know what i'm probably going to jump more into that in a future video there's just so much to talk about when it comes to this movie they really crammed a lot into the two hours and it didn't feel rushed either, it, it had a really good pace throughout, but back to the whole, you know, Jesse and the bittersweet ending, he had no one else to say goodbye to other than Brock, who he hadn't even seen since he escaped or since obviously before he became a prisoner. I'm not too sure how smart it was to tell Brock that he was leaving, but I'll have to see if I can go take another look at the actual letter you know, because Ed opens it to kind of take a look at it and see if we can find out exactly what he even wrote Brock, and regardless, it was a nice nod to tie up that storyline. It's nice that after everything that happened throughout Breaking Bad, that at least one character gets a chance at another life. Well, I mean, I guess there's Saul as Gene, but he's just paranoid and going batshit crazy. This version with Jesse in Alaska seems a lot more peaceful and positive. And so all the cameos were great in the movie to list them off. There's Mike, there's Todd, Walt, Jane, Junkyard Joe, Ed the vacuum cleaner guy, there's Jesse's parents. It all fits into the situation of the movie well, didn't feel forced, served its purpose, didn't overstay its welcome. Honestly, it left me wanting more, and there was a lot in there already. The dialogue was brilliant and beautiful. I mean, who didn't love it when Walt tells Jesse you didn't have to wait your whole life to do something special as he stares through the diner window at the RV? Let me know what you guys thought about the El Camino movie, along with what about the movie we should discuss next, but that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Oh, and I know this reaction isn't me just sitting here with a webcam or my live mic as I watch the show, freaking out when I see Walt show up on screen for instance, but I'd rather just enjoy the piece of entertainment first and then give my immediate reaction after, instead of trying to have to, you know, overreact for the camera. Hopefully that makes sense. That being said, I still am sitting down and doing the video immediately after watching it for the first time, which is why it's not like I'm pointing out every single little detail throughout the film. We'll get more so into that in the future once we've gone back and watched the movie a few more times and really gotten everything we can out of it. And sorry if my voice has been a little bit raspy in this video, I'm not sure. It kind of feels like I'm losing my voice, but not really. I don't know, maybe I just need some sleep, but... With that being said, I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, as we always gotta try and appease the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe and hit that bell for more content on the Breaking Bad universe, the movie, the show, the prequel, the sequel, anything in the near future, but that's pretty much it for today. I thank you guys all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!